The advantage goes to Wendy Bruce by a 1.60 margin. That is after three events. On the men's side, Mike Williams leads Scott Burris. A close matchup, though. 0.9 separates these two gentlemen with two rotations remaining, the parallel bars and the horizontal bar. And right now, Scott Burr is ready to compete on the parallel bars. You can see that the curtains have being, are being pulled back behind the parallel bar event. We've been using those curtains as a backdrop, but Scott's going to do an interesting mount. And if the curtains were there, his legs would crash right into him. So the coaches are going to have to hold the curtains back so they can do these giant swings on the end of the bar. Giant front up rise to a straddle front one and a quarter. Good opening run. Back toss a little bit over. Catches the next one. Oh, how about oh. That's too bad. He was doing a, a dismount that Sukahara first did. Sukahara was, of course, the inventor of the Great Vault, but he also invented a couple other moves on the high bar as well as the P bars. He got off to a good start with flares here to a plange, giant front uprise, front toss all the way around to support, and a glide kip. Really good opening sequence. Now he gets to the one bar here, and he's gonna do what they call a snap down back over the other bar. It's a tough move, it's very close, and he just way oh. pulls it way over. <laughs> Into the plant stand. 9.0, the score for Scott Burr on the parallel bars. <laughs> he's trying to maintain his sense of humor about the situation. I think it's more embarrassing than yeah. it was in terms of physical hurt, but. It was a good routine. It's too bad that happened. He was going great. Can we blame the plant? <laughs> Let's do. Mike Williams up next. Point nine is advantage over Scott Burr at this point. The peach straddle cut to an L. Rest to a handstand. Diamidal. short on those handstands. You can see he's not quite getting them all right to the top and he's having to fight the positions a little bit. He needs to extend out just a little more on those handstands. And of course when you can't quite find the handstand, you can't quite find the bottom of the swing as well. And of course that's why he got into trouble on the disco. <laughs> After he saw Scott Burr fall, it left him a little advantage, I would say, but he didn't really capitalize on it. Look at here. You can see he does a pirouette, and he's underbalanced there. He needs to squeeze that to the position the handstand needs to be in. He does the stutz, and he's short again. He needs to be finding those handstands. And, of course, that led to the problem on the dismount because he wasn't straight up and down. He went through the bottom, rushed it through the bottom, and then pulled it around to over-rotate. So in a case of monkey see, monkey do, is an opportunity for flubby dismounts. 8.85. So Scott Burr has taken one apparatus from Mike Williams. By a .15 margin, he beats Mike Williams on the P-bars, but still trails by .75 after five rotations. The women now are about to make their final appearance in this round. Wendy Bruce against Robin Richter. Wendy Bruce is up first.
reminiscent of her teammate, Brandy Johnson. They have similar styles. Round off back handspring, tuck double back, nice. With room to spare. her opening tumbling run. This is a full twisting double back. She's flying across. Really a lot of speed. Round up back handspring. Watch the takeoff. She's very quick into the air. She pulls her knees in quickly. So look at she finishes that thing way up in the air and just drops out of the sky. Good job. Her second run was a tuck double back. Once again, tremendous speed. Good, quick takeoff. No problem. Judges liked it, too. They gave her a 9.775. Our next competitor is coming up on floor exercise from Nebraska School of Gymnastics. I believe it's mathematically impossible for Robin Richter to catch her at this point. Robin Richter trails by 1.60 going in, and after getting a 9.775, Robin Richter is now just competing for the score. Robin just missed a spot on the 88 Olympic team. She placed 14th in the final trials last year in Salt Lake City. Round off, whip, flip flop, flip flop, tuck double. In her second tumbling run, you can see here, she just round off back handspring, back layout with a full, right to the punch front, right there, boom. Nicely done. The last pass is a double full. She really gets a bad takeoff here. I don't know quite what happened. She twisted early. a little trouble with that ankle and I'm certain that she didn't really get a good punch when she took off to complete the double twist. Wendy Bruce received a 9.775 for her floor exercise routine. Robin is now waiting for hers. I think maybe you could answer a question. Why do the gymnasts tape their wrists so much for floor exercise? Well, there is a lot of pressure on the wrist bending back when you do the back handsprings. And to get the really powerful tumbling, you have to drill your hands back into the mat so that you can explode off the hands. And so there's quite a bit of pressure on the wrists, and uh, so wrist support helps a great deal. That's what the tape does. It supports the wrist from maybe hyperextending, exactly. getting strained. We will come back with a score for Robin Richter. We're going to break away now for a commercial message. Stay with us here. The competition continues at the 1989 U.S. Gymnastics Challenge.